I am showing six o'clock. Uh, good evening and welcome to the second of three parent uh, guardian community meetings as required uh, by the governor regarding the school reopening plans here at Fayetteville Manlius. I'm delighted to be speaking to you uh, tonight or late this afternoon as you're looking at it uh, with members of my district office administrative team and uh, some of our supervisors uh, from instructional technology as well as our director of facilities is joining us as well. So I will, depending on where they are on yours, uh, his Zoom screen, YouTube, I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi there, I'm Mary Coughlin, Assistant Superintendent for Instruction. Hello, I'm Lisa Deneen, I'm the Assistant Superintendent Uh, Jeff Gordon, Assistant Superintendent for Personnel. Bill Furlong, Assistant Superintendent for Business. Good evening, Laurel Chiesa, Director of Instructional Technology. Good evening, Russell McCarty, Director of Facilities. Thank you all uh, for joining me uh, tonight. Uh, our agenda for this evening is uh, pretty straightforward. We will go over a quick presentation. I'll try to expedite it because I know some of you may have joined us from earlier today, but I certainly, for those that are new to the session, uh, wanna be able to do justice to the slides uh, so they can get a little bit of the background, the history, as well as, well as uh, where we are going forward, including some of the common questions that we fielded. And then uh, we will open it up for an interactive question and answer session uh, that'll be moderated by our district clerk, Sarah Gridley, uh, using the YouTube chat uh, platform. If for some reason we run out of time this evening or your question is not answered, uh, please feel free to use the Let's Talk communication platform that is available on our school district website. There is a tab for that and those communications go directly to me. How do I know? Well, I have about 400 of them. I am working through them individually to try to give you all responses. Uh, some of them you will see the questions are in tonight's session. We've also addressed them in a frequently asked question document that appears on our uh, website as well. Uh, so uh, I will try to get to all of them as we go forward. And I certainly appreciate all of you reaching out uh, during this uh, unprecedented time in our school district's history. Speaking of history, as you all know, the COVID pandemic started with the school closure on March 16th. Our Board of Education met on for an emergency meeting uh, over the weekend prior on uh, Sunday, March 15th. And we ended up rearranging our school calendar that week using uh, Staff Development Day on the 16th, a couple of emergency closing days thereafter, and then we began remote instruction on Thursday the 19th. We were suddenly thrust into this. This includes teachers, students, and families as well. Uh, without very much preparation, I think everybody made the best of it, uh, but at the same time, we knew that things could be better. And in terms of lessons learned, uh, we ended up uh, sending out a parent guardian family feedback survey in June. You may remember completing that. We had about 1,400 responses. We also sent out a teacher professional development needs assessment. Dr. Coughlin surveyed the teachers to see what things that they would like offered during the summer curriculum uh, workshops. And in particular, you'll see in a second, they addressed uh, a lot of online and remote learning. As far as the parent feedback survey in June, uh, as I said, 1,400 respondents and the main areas were connections. Uh, they realized the asynchronous lessons of the spring needed to be replaced with more synchronous lessons, possibly live streaming, possibly a flipped classroom with lessons taped that families could review later in the day when parents would return from work. Uh, and so flexibility would be built in, but they knew connections were very important. Uh, office hours as well, not only for students, which I uh, am pleased that our instructors provided during the spring, but at the same time, they wanted office hours for parents. So parents could talk to the teachers, almost mini parent-teacher conferences, so to speak, to pick up some pedagogical tips of the trade for uh, providing instruction at home. 
Another main area was engagement, uh, motivating the student. At first, uh, it was a novelty. Uh, many of us thought the pandemic would last only a little while and we would return to school. And uh, so it was quite uh, obviously a surprise as it extended right to the end of the school year. So motivation uh, waned as the uh, year progressed uh, and student engagement was a priority for the parents who filled out the survey. Flexibility, uh, as I mentioned earlier, another key attribute. Not all parents uh, have the same schedules, not all family guardians have the same schedule. So the opportunity to be able to be flexible was important, uh, whether it's being uh, working on lessons later in the evening, as I said, or having a student participate during the day. Some students going to childcare did not have access or that option during the day and would have to do their work later in the evening. And then finally, less screen time. Uh, we were good about getting the Chromebooks out uh, to the students uh, and families, uh, but uh, you could tell from this survey, the families craved more print materials, more paper pencil activities uh, to uh, do during the year and to, in, in lieu of additional screen time. As far as the teacher needs assessment survey, as you can see a lot on remote learning and distance learning, whether it was math instruction, science, writing, uh, use of uh, Google Slides platform, they wanted to address uh, student engagement and ways of uh, perking up uh, the instruction so it was more active than passive. In terms of school reopening, you'll recall we did a second survey in early July. There were about 2,100 respondents to this survey. And the, the, this survey occurred at the same time that you may recall that the Board of Regents and the State Education Department were conducting their regional forums throughout the state. In fact, our board president, Marissa Joy Mims, and our high school principal, Dr. Ray Kilmer, participated and I know there were some teachers and parents involved as well, uh, but the idea was to get regional feedback to the state ed department who was looking to put together uh, their guidance in mid-July. And so the survey really gave us an opportunity to share with all of our families the many different options that were being considered. I know from Let's Talk, uh, some of the early uh, returns on that as well as emails that parents uh, were a little concerned with different options. Some liked this option half days, others didn't. Some liked alternating weeks, others didn't. Some wanted alternating days and so forth. And it was clear from that survey that no one uh, idea uh, surfaced that was going to please everybody. But one of the things that was uh, pretty apparent as a result of that July survey is that our families in the FM district wanted that consistency, that fluidity. They wanted a teacher of record. They wanted the FM brand. They wanted FM students with FM teachers. That came through loud and clear. Uh, capacity was also important. They, uh, when the ever-changing landscape of uh, changing CDC regulations or this executive order, they knew that they wanted to maximize uh, the school facility uh, to be able to include as many students as possible, but yet keeping everybody uh, safe in terms of social distancing. And then finally, the third and final item that was self-evident uh, was equity. They wanted all grade levels to participate in any kind of a return to school, K through 12. Uh, you may have heard in the media that some districts were considering uh, lower levels, other districts were considering upper levels, such as seniors to get them through. Uh, and onto the college process, but in FM, it was clear that that equity was very important, that no one grade level was going to be a throwaway grade level to help another grade level, and that everybody should have equal access to the strong FM education. Uh, finally, uh, the governor released the Department of Health guidance on July 13th, uh, about a month late. I know that uh, they had promised it in mid-June, so we were patiently waiting. We were still going ahead with some of our rudimentary plans, but it was great to finally get that guidance, albeit a month late in the middle of uh, July, because it basically focused on four items, the reopening of school. A lot of this was contained in the state ed uh, guidance that was released later that week, but they focused in on more of the Department of Health items, such as monitoring and testing, 
containment if students or staff were exhibiting symptoms of COVID-19, and then finally closure. What would it mean to close a classroom or to close a school building or to close the entire district or a region because of a resurgence in the virus? And as you may have heard today, the governor has talked that it is a risky business that he wants schools to pay attention to these four areas and to be able to work with their local county of health uh, that we were that we are working with right now. Uh, the state ed guidance, as I said, followed later that week on the 16th, uh, 145 pages. And in those 145 pages are the 89 assurances. Yours truly had to sign off on 89 subcategories. And you can see on the slide all the different main categories that were listed in terms of uh, transportation, food service, social emotional health. Uh, attendance, uh, special ed, and so forth. And so there were 89 assurances that I had to attest to uh, when I uploaded our plan on July 31st. Uh, needless to say, uh, the answers for those 89 assurances, as you, some of you I've talked with, uh, my choices were yes, yes, or yes. There was no way to say no, we weren't doing a certain area. There was no way not to answer a field. Everyone was a required field in the database. So we had to provide those 89 assurances. Now I know the landscape has changed since mid-July and different research has come out or different rules have been changed. But you have to remember our plan was built on those uh, mid-July guidance documents. We're certainly open to modifying, changing and, and making a better plan as we go forward. But for those of you that took the time to review our document in detail. It is a combination of both the New York State Department of Health and the State Ed Department guidance. Uh, so what did we do for those three weeks? It was nearly an impossible task, not just for the FM district, but every other district in central New York and throughout the state. So the first week uh, we put a uh, pencil to paper and started with the New York State Department of Health compliance work in terms of the monitoring containment and closure items and starting to work with our local county government department of health to better understand our obligations under that guidance. The following week was busy as uh, building teams convened with some representative teachers and parents, instructional forums, site-based teams. So we really worked to address those 89 assurances, the 145 pages of guidance from the state ed department and the board of regents. And why did we make quick use or quick work of uh, those two weeks? Because in our third and final week before the plans were due, we had to hold advisory committee meetings. Now many districts held one advisory committee meeting being FM, as you know, we held six. We had one at every different level to involve teachers and parents on opportunity. We had a medical professionals advisory committee. We affectionately called our medical review board. We had a parent council advisory committee of the numerous parents who offered to help out and volunteer. And then finally an FMTA, our uh, faculty uh, stewardship advisory committee for them to be able to have a frank discussions about their concerns. So finally, we submitted the plans on July 31st, uh, both to state ed and to uh, the government, to the Department of Health, or so we thought, as you'll hear in just a second. On uh, the following week, we didn't let much grass grow between the tires because we sent out a family perception questionnaire. You may recall that it asked you uh, whether your gut was telling you that you would return have your child return to school or to stay home on remote learning, uh, whether you would avail yourselves of our transportation department or you would transport uh, your child uh, yourself, or whether childcare was going to be an issue given the hybrid schedule. This was very important. Uh, we did receive a lot of let's talk and email correspondence from you saying that uh, is it binding, it's too early to make a decision, we would rather wait till Labor Day to have more information and all of those were good responses. Uh, we really as parents ourselves would want uh, that extra time to make those decisions. Uh, it wasn't binding uh, for those of you that did fill it out. In fact, you may have received a follow up questionnaire today where we're trying to get that actual information from this early one. 
But the reason I reference this slide in our brief history is that was a, an important tipping point for the district. We had to start planning. So many of your following questions that we'll deal with tonight are because uh, that early uh, time in August, we had to start again, putting the plan and making it operational. We couldn't wait any longer. It's bad enough on a routine school year, but unfortunately this year has been anything but routine. As far as that survey though, uh, to those three questions, uh, it held true. 65% of you uh, desired in-person instruction across all grade levels. 25% uh, believe that childcare was gonna be a problem and 50% said they would avail themselves of school district transportation while the others would transport themselves. So on August 7th, the governor said that schools are able to reopen. Uh, he cited some statistics that he'll be looking at in terms of the region and the infection rates, but then said it was permissible for schools to reopen. What was curious is in the days that followed, the governor was being reflective I'm sure he didn't want all the responsibility himself, but he said that parents and teachers should really think long and hard about their school district plans to ask questions. And as you know, on August 10th, he mandated that uh, the districts hold public meetings, uh, three public meetings for central school districts, five public meetings for the larger districts, the big five, in addition to faculty and staff meetings. The governor also said that uh, he wanted three addenda to be put online for the reopening plans for the COVID testing, contact tracing, and a description of remote learning. He said that some school plans, uh, he didn't identify which districts were indecipherable, but he felt that these addenda would put at the community's fingertips the information they needed. As you noticed on August 14th, we did upload those plans uh, on COVID testing and contact tracing, thanks to our partnership with the Onondaga County Department of Health, as well as a description of remote learning. So going forward, uh, what are our plans going forward? All K-12 district uh, students in the district will be scheduled for a hybrid classroom to begin. That is the default. So the students will be assigned uh, to cohort A or cohort B, and it is alphabetical. It is by uh, last letter of the oldest child in the household. Cohort A will attend on Mondays and Tuesdays, cohort B on Thursdays and Fridays. We will work out equity given the holidays that occur on different days of the week. But that Wednesdays would be an opportunity for professional development for our teachers, uh, would be a, an opportunity for asynchronous learning, office hours for both students and parents, as well as a deep cleaning and disinfecting of the building. And we would do that again on the weekend before the next cohort arrived. Now what's important is the survey was sent out uh, today uh, and you should have it uh, from School Messenger that families may opt in to the remote option. Remember the hybrid is the default. So you can look at it as either opting out of the in-person hybrid or opting in to the remote only option. If you'll recall about 30 to 35% of you indicated that you would want your children uh, to uh, participate in the remote learning option. We also asked the Board of Education to put our staff development days from November and May 2021 earlier in the year. So we will use all four of our staff development days up front, uh, September 2nd and 3rd, which were originally scheduled, and then the Tuesday and Wednesday after Labor Day for additional staff development. Uh, some of you have asked what will happen if we're not closed and we're still open on the general election day in November or the school budget vote in next May. Uh, we certainly could make those remote learning days. I think that we still have those options at our disposal, but the idea was to give as much time as possible for our faculty and staff to get ready for the start of the school year. More or less a soft opening on the 10th. Uh, as you may have read in the guidance document, we are required to provide training videos on respiratory hygiene, the masks, social distancing, and hand hygiene. 
Uh, so that information will be available on our website. Students do not necessarily need a Google, uh, Chromebook, certainly can use a cell phone or the home computer at home to access uh, that information, which will be available on our website and social media. First day of instruction for cohort B students will be that Friday. Again, a little bit of a soft opening, only half the students, but we wanted to make sure that uh, uh, we would have some team building activities to be able to provide them the Chromebook because as uh, cohort A starts on Monday, we would want cohort B to have their Chromebooks to be able to uh, move forward. And speaking of Chromebooks, thanks to the work of Laurel who's with us tonight and uh, Dr. Coughlin, uh, and Mr. Furlong uh, from the business office, we ordered Chromebooks to be a one-to-one -one school. And we got our order out at the end of the last academic year, beginning of the new fiscal year to try to be first in line. And so we expect those Chromebooks uh, to arrive shortly. I know other districts are anticipating a much longer turnaround in order to be able to get their Chromebooks by October or November. As I said, again, uh, first day of instruction for cohort A is Monday, September 14th, and that will be the Chromebook distribution for cohort A. In fact, as you probably gathered already, we'll be, uh, the students will be able to uh, take back and forth to home any print materials as well during that time. So this will allow us to get additional print materials into the hands of students as they attend school for the two days of the week. What I'd like to do now is to address some of the common questions that uh, kind of flooded the inbox uh, on the email and let's talk. Uh, if for some reason we don't get to your particular question, I would ask you to use the chat feature in YouTube to be able to uh, enter your question. I'll, all I ask is that you don't get into any particular specifics as far as names go. If you have a concern about uh, your child in a particular building, I urge you to reach out to that uh, building's main office to speak with an administrator or counselor about your concerns. So again, we'll speak in generalities this evening when we open the floor up for questions. But let's hit some of the common ones that were coming in over and over again. First question, will families have the option of selecting the remote learning model? Yes. Families will have the option of choosing the remote only model. You may have noticed in the media, some districts did not provide that option. There was a lot of parental outrage, guardian outrage. And so uh, we knew from the start that some families, whether it's pre-existing health conditions or elderly relatives living in the household, that they did not want their children to attend school. So you will definitely have the option for remote learning Monday through Friday. And that's the reason we sent the survey out today. Please keep in mind that your child is registered for that hybrid model and we will need your feedback to shift them to the remote learning model. Next popular question, will parents and guardians be able to switch from in-person to remote learning? Yes, in accordance with the FAPE legislation, free appropriate public education. I know you, me, some of you have talked to me that I think our plan originally said a year. Some districts are looking at a year, a semester. Others landed with a marking period every quarter. I think it would help our sanity to be able to have it uh, blocked off per quarter. But theoretically, parents could decide to start their children in the hybrid model and then move to a remote model at the drop of a hat uh, to be able to go back and forth because that is an instructional option. It may drive us nuts in the school district, uh, but we certainly would accommodate that. And where this question was coming from, were parents willing to send their children to school, but barring any changes in the resurgence of the virus and uh, the research that has been going on regarding COVID-19, they wanted to be able to shift into a remote learning model uh, again at the drop of a hat. Next popular question, will students and staff have to wear masks and socially distance themselves? Yes, this was confusing at first if you compared the state ed guidance as well as the Department of Health guidance from New York State. It looked at first to be masks or social distance. So they did clarify and then they clarified the clarification. Uh, I say that tongue in cheek. Uh, so it's masks and social distancing. So the rooms have been set up accordingly. 
That's the reason we're in the hybrid model. We have maximized space, and I give credit to all the building principals and their custodial teams for working uh, together to try to maximize the space. Some of you ask, why can't we use a church or a synagogue or a Grange Hall or fire department or YMCA? Uh, those are great ideas. The question becomes equity again, who gets to go there? Does your child stay in a nice school building and somebody else's child end up at the old fire hall or whatever? And even if we did get that additional space, uh, we would still have to go through the Department of Facilities Planning in Albany it's the state ed department in order to get clearance because things like fire alarms and other required uh, requirements for uh, construction are met and for student safety. So some districts who had looked into alternate facilities, I know are still waiting to get a response from facilities planning as they have been very busy, not only with those requests, but other construction projects that are going on like our Wellwood construction project. So we've really tried to maximize the use of our six buildings, as you can imagine. Next popular question, will students be able to use their lockers and cubbies? No, uh, the guidance says limited access. Certainly, I believe that's for the winter months if we make it to the winter. As you know, so much of this is balanced on the head of a pin uh, and it depends on a resurgence of the virus. It also depends on the flu season and what that looks like. So as it stands now, students will not be allowed to use their lockers or cubbies. They'll have to put their sweaters or coats over the back of the chair, bring their backpacks to their desks. Uh, part of this rationale is to prevent congregating in the hallways or obstruction in the hallways. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the schools will be using one-way hallways or one-way stairwells uh, for students to travel in order to promote social distancing. The other is uh, to discourage families from sending a lot of things into school. So the idea is that uh, by not allowing lockers and cubbies, there will be less extra baggage, so to speak, coming from the home into the school and that uh, the students should be uh, carrying just what they need in their backpacks. Next question, are fans permitted to operate in the classrooms? Uh, not when students are present. Uh, they're worried about the virus uh, being in the air. And uh, so certainly fans are not permitted while students are in the classroom. Uh, windows will be opened as much as possible to allow fresh air circulation. Again, weather permitting before the onset of winter. Uh, we will support our indoor spaces with air filtration systems. We've looked at all of our filters. Uh, for the most part, we were able to honor the MERV 13 filtration. Uh, some of our older units uh, will be MERV 9 just because they cannot accommodate the MERV 13 filtration. And we will augment those with positive airflow handlers with the idea of circulating more fresh air through that particular classroom. Next popular question, will water fountains be operational? Yes, the bottle fill stations. Uh, we'll try to install more bottle fill stations where we can. Some buildings have limited access, but we do have to provide uh, one water fountain for every 100 occupants. So some uh, buildings will have their bubblers uh, uh, operational. Others, we will turn off uh, the bubblers in some of the classrooms just because it is a high touch area and we're trying to discourage the spread of the virus. But uh, we will have water fountains. Uh, they will be operational and we encourage you to send your child with uh, bottled water uh, to school. Next popular question, will PPE, personal protective equipment, be available for staff and students? Yes, the district must provide one mask per teacher staff member per day and one mask per student per week. Nurses will have N95 masks and other PPE equipment, including uh, those that take temperatures that we'll talk about in just a second. I know some of you will uh, encourage your child to uh, bring their own mask to and from school, and that is fine. You may have read uh, the recent uh, research from, uh, I believe Duke, that said that uh, gaiters or bandanas were not uh, effective. I know it's still listed in the guidance. We would prefer and encourage mask usage uh, and there may be an executive order coming out in response to that recent research from Duke. 
will staff and students be required to complete daily health screening? The answer is yes for staff members. Uh, we will be using software to prompt our staff members to ask those screening questions daily uh, before they come to work, including yours truly. Uh, students will be required to complete a screening periodically. We will probably send that out via school messenger. We're not trying to be intrusive. This is just congruent with the local Department of Health uh, wanting this uh, data, especially when it comes to their contact tracing. Because if there is a positive case, if there is a confirmed case, uh, they will be doing the contact tracing. So uh, the periodic screening will be important to them. Will students be screened for body temperature upon arrival to school? Yes, they will be screen, uh, screened upon entrance to the school building. We are staggering the arrivals of our school buses, no more than two at a time. Uh, we do not want the students to congregate either on the bus or in line. Uh, we will have multiple staff members taking temperatures with thermal scans. Any students that uh, strike uh, a temperature of higher than 100 will be screened again at the nurse's office using a digital probe thermometer, a little bit more accurate. Uh, and if uh, they are exhibiting a fever, uh, parents or guardians and family members will be called uh, to pick them up uh, at school. So uh, as you receive your schedules from the building principals, I ask you to uh, pay special attention because your promptness and timeliness for arrivals and dismissals will be very important, especially for those of you that elect to transport your own children. Uh, so pay special attention. Is it before the buses arrive, after the buses arrive? Again, the day is going to look a little bit different. We're gonna try to stretch out arrival, stretch out dismissal. Uh, so it certainly won't be what it used to be, uh, but we are trying to uh, just mitigate, again, the social uh, congregation and social distancing. Next up, will the school buildings and school buses be cleaned on a regular basis? Uh, yes, uh, all high touch areas will be cleaned at least three times a day, approximately every two hours, and school buses will be disinfected twice daily. Uh, so I know the guidance says that school buses will only be disinfected uh, once a day, but we are doing it twice a day after uh, the morning uh, pickup and then afternoon drop-offs. Speaking of school buses, we already talked about this, the staggered arrivals and dismissals, uh, that is being choreographed. We are planning that accordingly in order to avoid the congregation of students at the single points of entry. We said we would have additional staff on duty. Our uh, physician's advisory committee recommended that we do the screening of the students with the temperature. So the staggered arrivals uh, will be very important uh, to that. And we're also using the single points of entry that we typically use for the arrival of the students. We do not want to forego any of our security protocols that we've worked so hard over the years and so I know some districts are opening up multiple doors. Uh, we are trying to uh, stagger the arrival and dismissals in order to maintain that single point of entry and security. Will parents have the option? We indicated that already. They will have the option to opt out of school district transportation. Again, we ask you to adhere to the schedule in order to uh, uh, drop off and or pick up uh, your children. I know our elementary principals are looking at a new software package to help expedite uh, parent pickup in the afternoon. Speaking of cleaning, will teachers and staff members be asked to clean the inside of the classrooms? The answer is yes. Cleaning, alcohol cleaning wipes will be provided for each classroom in addition to the hand sanitizer. Uh, it's important to note, though, that cleaning will not be permitted when students are inside of the classroom. So I know the different buildings, especially the middle and high schools that uh, are working with the bell schedule will uh, be looking at dismissing students in different waves to try to give teachers the opportunity to have that time to uh, wipe down the high touch areas. Next question uh, that was popular, what will happen when a student exhibits COVID-19 symptoms? The student will report to an isolation room before being picked up by a parent, guardian, or family member. Uh, we are required to have supervision in the isolation room and it will be a staff member that will report directly to the school nurse. 
I'm also pleased to announce that thanks to the work of Mr. Gordon and the Board of Education and our school physician, we were able to, and we will this Monday, ask the Board of Education to uh, appoint a COVID coordinator who is a parent, who is also a physician, uh, a parent in the district and a physician who will provide boots on the ground support for our school nurse and uh, school physician. So I thank everyone for their work and look forward. I think we're uh, one of the few districts, if not the only district to take that extra measure. Will some special areas conduct their instruction outdoors? Yes, uh, as you know, there's a 12 foot social distancing radius for physical education and music, vocal music. We anticipate instrumental music will be remote and online, uh, but anytime that there's exertion, uh, the guidance says it'll have to be a 12 foot social distance. So again, uh, weather permitting, we'll try to get outdoors as much as possible. And this will also apply to recess at the elementary grade levels. Next popular question, if more than 50% of our families elect a remote option, will you consider bringing the other students more often? Well, yes and no. We promise to keep an open mind going forward and keeping all options available. Uh, the only thing that gives us pause is because remember, families will have the option of going back and forth. It's their choice, we cannot deny them. Uh, we may ask for a marking period at a time, or it's like some districts, a semester or a full year, but they could turn around and alternate days uh, during the week. So that would be very difficult to give a particular seat away unless we're pretty certain uh, that we're able to do it or trade with uh, somebody else in another cohort. We're gonna have to be strategic about it, but we have to see where the chips fall, where they may. So that's why we started with the alphabetical. Uh, we need to get started and just to see what it all looks like when the year moves into full year. The cohorts are created alphabetically, uh, last name of the oldest child in the household. We know some families uh, have uh, some children with different last names. So we will go with the oldest child in the household. So you may see a family that you know is in the first part of the alphabet that is now in cohort B, but it's because of the oldest child uh, uh, in that particular household. Again, we're always happy to look to things in the future. If they're my line around here lately is if we can build a better mouse trap, we'll definitely consider it. We're not trying to be stubborn, but we have to get started. Uh, we, as I said, with that early survey in early August, we had to put uh, pencil to paper and to get started on planning or we would not be as far along as where we are now at this point. Next popular question, will students change classes according to the bell schedule? Again, another yes and no at the secondary level, most definitely, students will change at six through 12. At the elementary level, K through five, students will remain in self-contained classrooms for the most part. Even special area instruction will cycle in and out of those classrooms. Who will coordinate the COVID testing? Uh, we will work with the Onondaga County Department of Health. A uh, survey will be going out to the staff uh, within the next day or so here about uh, getting them tested now. Uh, and so uh, we will uh, work with the Department of Health. Uh, I know Upstate Medical is getting a new machine. They may do surveillance testing. It will have to be with parental consent, uh, but certainly uh, we will cooperate with the local Department of Health and so, uh, whether it's the uh, pool testing, as they say, or the more specific molecular testing, uh, we will let them take the lead. And that will also mean for contact tracing. If there is a confirmed case, they will uh, uh, work with us uh, and uh, do the contact tracing as we found out with uh, the football team and the practicing that was in the media a few weeks ago. Uh, I found out that it was the 48 hours prior to the onset of symptoms. And if there was a gap in the information, that's when they go public. Uh, so they certainly won't name any names, but they will identify that the public needs to reach out to them, much like we saw with the restaurant at Destiny uh, just recently with the hepatitis A. It's when there is a gap in the information, they will definitely keep you posted. Uh, will the school communicate? Just as I said, we will make that information available, obviously not the particular details of the student 
but uh, we will turn this over to the Department of Health for their contact tracing. So they will contact you uh, if the child was in a particular classroom with another child who had a positive test, we may end up uh, closing classrooms or buildings or the whole district, depending on the results of uh, our collaboration with them. Uh, will school building or school district be closed when there's a confirmed case? Once again, it will be up to uh, the Onondaga County Department of Health if there is a resurgence of the virus, and it would not surprise me, it's conceivable that if there's a resurgence in the region that the governor would end up closing schools much like he did in March. If a class or school building is placed in quarantine, will the teachers and students participate in remote learning? Yes, uh, remote learning will be the default. So as long as everybody's healthy, we certainly don't want anybody to feel compelled to uh, work either as a teacher or to participate in instruction uh, if they're sick as a student. But as long as everybody is just in the quarantine period, we will be providing uh, the remote learning Monday through Friday as the default option. If a student or staff member tests positive, when will they be able to return to school? That's again, crystal clear. The individual in question will require a negative test or clearance from their physician is what we've been told. What will happen to after school extracurricular activities, clubs, interscholastic athletics? Uh, I'm sorry to report that after school extracurricular activities will not occur. As such, there will be no opportunities for extra help, nor will the district host enrichment uh, activity periods uh, at the middle and high schools. As some of you know, interscholastic athletics have been postponed to September 21st uh, at the earliest. It's my understanding the governor is going to make an announcement sometime this week, but as you may have gleaned from the New York State Public High School Athletic Association communications, They've already pitched a fallback position where winter sports would occur January and February, uh, fall sports March and April, and spring sports in May and June without any state competitions, just to try to provide some local competitions for the student athletes. Uh, next popular question, will school hallways and staircases have one directional travel? Yes, in all likelihood, uh, each school uh, will be determining their own pedestrian traffic patterns using floor decals. We've already ordered those. We've ordered the polycarbonate uh, uh, shields uh, that will be in offices and in some special education classrooms where there are tables. Uh, so we will try to expedite movement, limit interactions and ensure social distancing while the students are traversing the hallways. Will the school district offer orientation programs like Link Crew for the students entering high school? Yes, I know the building principals are conspiring to offer some orientation programs for students, especially those grade levels who are new to a particular building. That includes kindergarten, grade five, and grade nine. So be sure to look for more information if you have a child at that grade level. Uh, what will Wednesdays look like in the hybrid instructional model? Much like the spring, they'll be new and improved. It may be asynchronous instruction as it was this past spring, but it's also going to include student parent office hours as well as professional development for the teachers. Uh, certainly the teachers have asked for additional support. Uh, the district has hired an online remote learning specialist to work with them as a peer coach not as an administrator supervising, but somebody who can roll up their sleeves and collaborate with them. So certainly Wednesdays will give us an opportunity to uh, work on our craft uh, as we go through the entire school year. And then last but not least, what if I have more questions that have not been answered? Uh, I ask you to reach out to your child's school building administrator or send a Let's Talk dialogue to my attention. I, like I said, I'm working through them I think I'm down to just under 300. I'm chipping away at all of them, uh, but I would like to give you a response or at least I'll try to direct you to the frequently asked questions or any of these videos uh, to uh, get some of your answers. But again, if there's something in particular, I ask you to reach out. I know we're all busy. I certainly thank my team of administrators and teachers and, and everybody has been working so hard uh, to try to get ready for the start of the year, and we will try to get an answer to you. But never hesitate to pick up the phone, and if you'd rather not have it funnel through me and bottleneck, because I am dealing with that volume, 
again, please feel free to reach out to your child's uh, school building main office. With that said, I will stop the share. And so we can get into some of the questions and my team will be available. And I will ask our district clerk uh, to act as moderator and to read the questions off. Good evening. First question, for students that have an IEP or have special services, are they still going to school four days a week? Not all the students with IEPs will be going to school four days a week. It, it will be students that are of high need and have a special education teacher as the teacher of record. If, you're, if a student um, is in a general ed classroom and receives a resource or teacher consultant model, their teacher of record is the gen ed teacher. They will get the special ed services and related services as per their IEP as, as practicable, but they will be going to school with their cohort and not four days a week. Next question, will there be any school specific informational meetings? For, for instance, can we find out what a remote day for the high school will be like? I can take that. The uh, schools are sending out information, which will also uh, more detailed information, including schedules and frequently asked questions, which are specific to that level. Uh, that information will also be posted on our website uh, by Friday. Next question. Please explain how mask breaks will work. Will they be in the classroom with students six feet apart? or elsewhere? Uh, that is my understanding and others can jump in here as well. Uh, I know the high school is looking at a wellness period in the middle of the day that will act as a mask break, especially when the students uh, may elect to have their lunch. Uh, but yeah, we are looking at ensuring that it's social distancing, even though the mask may be off temporarily if the student is consuming their lunch. Is there an option for the elementary students to only attend the learning portion of the block schedule four days a week? At this point, no, I'm, uh, uh, because we have scheduled everybody into the hybrid model. You have to remember parents, because we're offering this as an option, it is not a student being homeschooled. So this is part of the Fayetteville Manlius Central School District. So because we're offering the remote option, parents can go back and forth. They may choose to start hybrid, and then if there's something that occurs and the media publicizes it and they're worried, they may end up moving to more of a remote model, but we still have to save the seat uh, for all students. I also would clarify with that, there's not a particular learning block. It is a uh, modified block schedule, but the entire day that students will be here is a instructional day, whether that be core subject areas like ELA, math, science, social studies, or a special area classes. Next question. What day and time would be set up for remote parents to pick up Chromebooks? I can answer that. Um, we're still working out the details, but we will get them to you um, per need. And it could be delivered through the bus um, or picking it up, but we're, we're still working out those details and we'll make sure we get them to you. It appears that the schools will not be doing any testing or contact tracing. Is that correct? The schools will not. Uh, we will be working in collaboration with the Onondaga County Department of Health. So our job is to report to them and they will take the ball and run with it at that point. I would like to explicitly understand yeah. the difference between synchronous and asynchronous instruction. What does that mean? On the days our children are home, will they attend virtually? Please outline details. 
Additional details will be coming from the schools and then eventually from a child's classroom teacher. By way of definition, a synchronous learning activity is live, real-time interaction with a teacher. And that could be a, a lesson overview, small group instruction, breakout rooms, um, et cetera. A, uh, asynchronous is uh, students are not involved in live real-time experiences. So that might look like pre-recorded videos. That could be uh, participation in a discussion group. That could be participation in blogs and working on a project, et cetera. Next question. How do we opt out of vocal classes in the Wellwood trailers? I believe they are incredibly dangerous. The Wellwood trailers uh, are temporary. It's a temporary classroom suite with air conditioning. In many ways, the rooms, uh, uh, they're a classroom uh, in many ways. I think the teachers and students will be fighting over who is in there. I know uh, Principal Corbin is assigning uh, different classes to those trailers, uh, and that will change as different parts of the building are being worked on. But uh, uh, we're, they were planning to do a video. I know the elementary principals were working on videos today to share with the students to help give them a little bit of an orientation. The uh, middle school principals are scheduled to do some videos, and I think the trailers are going to be part of that uh, walkthrough by Principal Corbin. So. Uh, these are not, you know, trailers that I think some people are thinking of. These are very nice uh, classrooms with air conditioning and new furniture in them. Mr. Furlong, did you want to say? Yeah, if, if I could add to that, um, anytime we have any type of school facility, whether it be, you know, the traditional brick and mortar or these uh, temporary mobile classrooms, there's a rather uh, rigorous uh, requirement to go through building code, through fire code, and the fire code and building code specific to schools in New York State is extremely uh, rigorous and very demanding. Um, you know, those uh, plans and specs for the uh, trailer or for the um, temporary classrooms were reviewed by the uh, State Education Department Office of Facilities Planning. They have to meet all the same criteria that our regular school buildings would need to meet in terms of uh, life safety, health, et cetera. Thank you, Mr. Furlong. Next question. We have a high schooler and a middle schooler. Will drop off in the morning account for delays at the other building level? High school will be uh, dropped off first and then middle school. We're still sticking with our triple tripping I know uh, our transportation department has done a wonderful job to try to choreograph it all together uh, and try to stick to the times. They may be off five, 10, 15 minutes at the maximum, uh, but I've been very impressed. Uh, uh, if it's a good visual for our folks that are listening in, if you can think uh, in the old days, it would be more of a wagon wheel uh, with the different spokes of the wheel going out to the far reaches of an attendance zone around a school. The buses would start out on the perimeter at, uh, in the morning and work their way back towards school, uh, which would be the axle or the hub of the wagon wheel. This time we're looking more like a target, concentric circles. So if you can think there, the buses, many buses will be put out on the far perimeter because we have to limit capacity on the buses and other buses will be in the close, closer concentric circle uh, that will almost look like a taxi or a shuttle service. So you may see bus 100 come in and bus 100 drops off again and bus 100 once again, because that bus is working the shorter distance right around the school. So we're looking at things a little bit differently. So I just use the wagon wheel and the concentric circle target to help people better understand that our transportation department has really put a lot of thought into this. And uh, hopefully there is not too much uh, you know, we, there may be a learning curve at the beginning of the year, as this uh, person suggests, but we're hoping to try to stick as close to the old schedule as possible. So we'll still be triple tripping. 
Next question. Please specifically tell us which rooms are not MERV 13 and above. Great question. I don't know if we have that information. It's the older units, correct, Mr. McCarty, Mr. Furlong? That would be correct. Most of the unit ventilators uh, are not equipped to handle a, a MERV higher than eight or nine. And we're supplementing too. We've talked about air handlers, air circulating um, systems. Is that? Yeah, uh, we're also, when unit ventilators are involved, we're also increasing the amount of air coming in from outside the building into those ventilators. So we're trying to increase the airflow within those rooms. Uh, we'll also be, you know, allowing windows to be opened uh, during uh, better weather days. Um, in certain classrooms, or not classrooms necessarily, but in uh, certain special education classrooms, in um, the nurse's office, in the isolation room, and certain other areas where we don't feel the ventilation is as adequate, we are employing the use of HEPA filter uh, filtration uh, devices in those rooms. Um, now, that's not every classroom in the district, but it's a, it's a pretty significant number. Next question. Since the students would remove their masks during lunchtime, I was wondering if the hybrid learning could be half days only, so they wouldn't need to remove their masks for an extended time. We talked about half day options and, and uh, some people love the idea, a lot of people hated the idea. I think it would be most problematic uh, with our transportation department, even transporting about half the students to try to honor that half day model. Uh, we are still incumbent upon the district to provide uh, breakfast and lunch for free and reduced populations. So uh, uh, not much is gained. In fact, much would be lost just trying to accommodate the transportation needs with uh, our current fleet. Next question. Can we use our own Chromebooks? Um, we will be issuing, like we said, uh, kindergarten through second iPads, three through 12 Chromebooks. Um, and we expect that when the Chromebooks in, uh, come into school that they're charged and usable. Uh, if you feel comfortable, your child can um, troubleshoot any problems with your the personal computer. That would be fine. But um, if it was one of the school uh, devices, the child would have a better chance of having our help desk and our teacher be able to have that function uh, right away. Next question. What additional administrative oversight procedures have you put in place to ensure consistency and efficacy in the delivery of the curriculum? That's always a major goal here at Fayetteville Manlius to have consistency among uh, all the schools and so that our students have a similar experience, not an exact experience, but they all experience the same curriculum and essential standards. We have uh, teacher leaders, uh, department leaders, instructional specialists, resource teachers, uh, myself who play a large role in, in that um, insurance of consistency. We we meet, we meet with the teachers, and we follow our curriculum maps, we update our curriculum maps, and um, that is an ongoing, uh, very important goal and uh, priority. I heard about Google Meet for remote learning. Do we need our own account or will a link be provided? What we like about Google Meet is that the students already have accounts for it. So they, when they go home with their device or the directions for distance learning on the device will say to log in with their Fayetteville Manlius issued account, which is attached to a Gmail account. So um, the, the teacher will share a link and it will log them immediately in. 
Next question. On August 16th, Ryan McMahon reported that in Onondaga County, the seven day infection rate is 0.88%, under 1%. What is the criteria for a return to five days of in-person school? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, right now, the CDC regulations are six feet and a mask and just in terms of our square footage, unless that is lifted, if it's just a mask and not socially distant, then we could return to the five days a week. And that was stipulated in our plan, but we would need the regulations to change. Next question. Earlier today, it was mentioned that students may not be able to bring hand sanitizer. Is this correct? And if so, please provide a rationale. We talked about it this morning and uh, said that we would look into it. Uh, in the past, I know students have been bringing hand sanitizer to school. It's just that the guidance this time says that it must be supervised. And that's the reason we hesitated this morning. So I think it's that part of the language is what we have to ask legal for in terms of clarifying, is it okay for students to still bring it because they customarily always have brought hand sanitizer, a few of them, or do, must it be under the supervision of a teacher? And if so, is that supervision for younger children as opposed to older children? So as we said this morning, that is something we're looking into. Mr. Gordon, were you gonna add something? Thank you. No, <laughs> not about hand sanitizer, no, I'm sorry. Saw you, I saw you on mute, but we will have hand sanitizer in all the classrooms. I know that Mr. McCarty and Mr. Furlong have ensured that. It's an excellent segue. Uh, this is a two-part question. Do you have sanitation stations for every classroom? What is the protocol for entering and leaving classes? In terms of sanitation stations, hand wash stations, I mean, restrooms will be available to students, they will be disinfected and cleaned by the custodial crews. Uh, we haven't added any additional, you know, sanitation hand wash stations uh, in each of the classrooms, but the sinks that are in the classroom would still be available as would the hand sanitizer. As far as entering and leaving classrooms, uh, we're trying to keep limited traffic flow in the hallways. We've talked about teachers holding doorknobs the inside of the doors to let students in and out of a classroom rather than having multiple hands touch the inside of the doorknob and that the custodians would clean the doorknobs on the outside of uh, the classroom in the hallway. Regarding full remote instruction, does that mean Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 3 p.m.? Students in the full remote, a total remote option will be expected to uh, participate in learning for an entire school day, yes. Uh, the hours will be different depending on the level. Who teaches in the total remote learning model? What does that look like for our children? Every student is assigned to a teacher uh, at the elementary level, a classroom teacher, or at the middle and high school level, a, um, a course load of teachers. And those teachers are responsible for teaching those students that we are calling cohort C. Oh, you're on mute. I see that. If sanitizers are not permitted, how about sanitizing wipes? Again, we're just going by the guidance. We will get legal counsel opinion on that in terms of what it means for teacher supervision. Will eighth grade students remain in the same classroom the entire school day? No, they will not. Um, it, because of the schedule at eighth grade and uh, the electives in particular that we offer, um, they will be, there will be some movement 
the principals have worked hard with the schedule to reduce that movement, but there, there will be movement. And just to add to that, that's one of the things that came through loud and clear is the community wanted our rich slate of electives. Uh, so many districts, as you know, are just offering core subjects at this time. Uh, we have tried to make every elective, just about every elective available as we would any other year. Are electric hand dryers being removed from district bathrooms to prevent potential aerosolization? I can answer that. If they're not gonna be removed, they will be disabled. Is the teachers union supporting in-person learning or will they fight it like in Syracuse City and Rochester City? Uh, good question. We have been working with uh, FMTA stewardship uh, as a separate advisory committee. We've held meetings with them. Certainly there are some members of that unit that are worried uh, about uh, coming back for in-person instruction. Uh, they do have their collective bargaining agreement at their disposal. There are a number of options uh, for those individuals. So uh, I know that even in Syracuse, uh, that some teachers are worried, some teachers are ready to be back in the saddle and others are sitting on the fence to see how it all sorts out. So uh, it's human nature. We understand the emotion involved in this and it's not just for our families and students, uh, but for our administrators, our clerical staff, our teachers, every unit uh, has had to uh, ask those questions of themselves and whether they're uh, ready to return. Uh, but the teachers are not without options, if that's what the question is. Their, their collective bargaining agreement provides them those options. I have a multi-part question on remote learning. What is the plan to engage students who are remote learning? Can there be specific sessions for remote learning with the classroom teacher so they are not just watching a classroom? Students in remote learning, whether they're in the total remote learning or the other um, three days that they're not in school, their teachers will have options. As we mentioned, there's the option of live streaming. Students who are total remote would also have uh, and participate in uh, recorded videos. They would be participating in discussions and uh, small groups with teachers. On uh, Wednesdays, there will be the opportunity for office hours and uh, time one-on-one -on -one with students. There also will be hopefully time at the end of the school day, at the middle of the high school in particular, uh, since we don't have the activity period and the enrichment period, we, if all goes well with transportation, hope to use that time for uh, direct contact with students. When will we know our children's schedule class assignment? Probably closer to Labor Day and the start of school. Historically, we've tried to send it out at the end of August, but as you can imagine, uh, with all the additional details that have gone into this uh, atypical year, it'll probably be closer uh, to the Labor Day holiday uh, just before the start of school. That's one of the reasons we moved the staff development days, not only to help in that arena, but to give us more time to get the word out to our families. How will attendance be taken? In person on the days the child is in the hybrid model. And then uh, in terms of remote, our learning management system, Schoology is able to record uh, whether the student logs on uh, to use it, even if it's in the evening uh, when a parent gets home from work. If a high school student has a full schedule with no lunch, will there be time for them to eat at all or will they have to drop a class so they can eat during the day? 
I could take that. So the high school is working on scheduling a wellness break in the middle of the day. And that would be an opportunity for students to eat at that time. If there is only 25% of families for which childcare is an issue, can the district provide childcare or provide some sort of financial support uh, we are looking to work with the YMCA, uh, not only for our faculty members. Mr. Gordon sent out a communication to that effect, uh, but I know for our essential workers, we were required to have that in the spring in terms of our partnership with the YMCA. But uh, the district cannot gift uh, public funds in terms of providing that child care support. With gym lockers being off limits, how will changing clothes and securing belongings for PE class work? My understanding is they won't be changing for gym. It'll be probably low aerobic uh, activities. Uh, that, so the curriculum will be modified. Am I saying the right thing, Dr. Kaufman? That's correct. The um, physical education teachers are working at um, meeting their, their standards with alternate type activities, uh, mindfulness, yoga, um, uh, using the outdoors as much as possible. Why is there an impression that schools will be shut down by winter? If the state criteria is five to 9% regional positive rate to shut down, and we never went above 3% in the height of the pandemic. I think it's a fear of the unknown. I mean, uh, some people in the media have called it a grand social experiment. And I think that's what's leading to some of the concerns in other districts. Uh, people are uh, afraid of the unknown. Uh, I, I think that's human nature, I'm nothing to be ashamed of. And the fear is with the resurgence of the virus, as the governor was on record today, or uh, the beginning of flu season, uh, people just do not know uh, all the different uh, variables that will impact the infection rate and, and what we will be dealing with at that time. So people, I think, are worried of the unknown. Can I just add to that, that um, just so we're clear, uh, we've been informed that it's very clearly the governor who may make that decision. Uh, it could be the county uh, that makes that decision or it could be the local school district or school board that makes that decision. It could be any of those three. Um, so it's not entirely our decision when or if that occurs, it would be, uh, it may be out of our control locally. There's been a lot of talk about Chromebooks. Do you need to have one for the in-school, in-person days? Yes, you will be, you will need to bring that device because there'll be a sign. We will no longer have carts of the Chromebooks or the iPads for K2. So that student will need to bring it charged each day to school. If parents aren't sure if their children will be going back to FM this year, should they still complete the questionnaire by August 24th? Uh, more information is always better than less information, so we would rather have that. Please keep in mind, as I said, they will be scheduled for a hybrid classroom. So really uh, letting us know uh, their intentions, they will not lose a seat. It would just be whether we put them, as Dr. Kaufman indicated, into cohort C, our total remote instruction. I might add to that, if that question is about a student who might be withdrawing from the district altogether, um, even though plans may be uncertain, it would be helpful to let uh, the buildings know that just so they could be aware. Will snow days be remote learning days or a non-instructional day? That is a great question. That's one we've had some internal discussions about. Uh, as what I said at this morning's meeting, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. 
uh, in spite of the thrill that I know for students and teachers and staff members alike for a snow day, uh, does this give us an opportunity for an on-campus day versus an online day? And does that free us up during the year to honor certain requests like we had this past year when a group of Muslim students asked for Muslim holidays off? Does it allow us in terms of the racial and equity questions that we've been dealing with as the entire nation deals with? Does this give us and afford us more options? So I think it's intriguing. It's a conversation I'd love to have more in depth with my administrative team and faculty. I just think there's options here that were not possible years ago that may provide new opportunities that we haven't even thought of yet. So I'm very intrigued by that. If a child has a fever at home before getting on the bus, should we contact the nurse's office as we normally would? Yes, that would be preferable, Mr. Gordon. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and obviously don't send the child. <laughs> There's some confusion about which days the cohorts will be getting their Chromebooks and will begin. Could you please re-review that information? Um, where we want to give them to the first, the day that they are in school, they will be they will be delivered to the classrooms prior to the first day. But I know I saw the question of the day prior to in school, they wouldn't have them. They would have to be in school to get them. So their first cohort A that Friday and that Monday. What will the capacity of the cafeteria be to ensure proper social distancing? I do not know the exact numbers unless Mr. McCarty or Mr. Furlong know. I, what I can tell you is that the tables will be replaced with desks. So it will look more like a study hall with the desks socially distanced in rows. Uh, so I know the media has said that uh, parents would love to have the children back for the collaboration and the socialization. I can tell you that the socialization will not be occurring during the lunch periods because it will look more like a study hall with people eating individually rather than as groups. Uh, so I do not have any specific numbers on the capacity, but I can tell you how the lunch rooms will be set up. Is there any difference in the curriculum for a quarantined hybrid student versus an all remote student? No. When will we find out if our high school student will be starting the day late or dismissed early so that we can make a decision about transportation? I know Dr. Kilmer sent the survey out. I'm unsure of the status if the information is in and they're taking a look at it now, but that's if they would like to call the high school main office and speak to one of the building administrators. I'm sure if they can't give an answer, they could certainly let people know the status of where they are with that survey. They have that information. It will depend on the, the student's schedule and what the capability is of scheduling all of the students' classes. During remote days, will students be required to follow their school day synchronously, or will they be given content and assignments to work on independently? And there will be a combination of both for the students who are total remote. How much streaming can we expect versus self-paced instruction? Uh, again, it's gonna, what Mary had talked about, it's gonna depend on the, the content and the grade level. Um, yeah. yeah. That the streaming is an option for teachers and they may choose to, um, live stream um, a significant portion of a lesson. They may do a class welcome. They may do a class meeting. Um, and that will 
as, as Laurel said, vary greatly depending on the grade level, the subject area, et cetera. And that, that will be a teacher choice. And we're trying to honor the individuality. I mean, as you know, for our folks watching uh, different classes, we've tried to protect all the electives and all the rich options. Uh, and it also means protecting the teacher autonomy. And I know different classes approach things, different teachers approach classes differently. And so we're trying to maintain that individuality as well. So I think teachers will use the tool differently as Dr. Coughlin and Laurel indicated. Uh, um, but I think at the same time, uh, we don't wanna forget that all the different electives are being offered as well. And that's part of it not to make it cookie cutter by any stretch of the imagination. We wanna be able to offer all the rigorous and relevant electives uh, that we have, uh, are known for. We have a series of questions regarding remote instruction being synchronous or asynchronous. Can you describe this please? In a previous uh, question, I explained that synchronous learning involves real lifetime opportunities for students. So again, that, that could be a live stream, that could be a teacher working with individual um, groups of students, it could be um, um, a brief lesson discussion, etc. Asynchronous is uh, not live and that could involve students uh, working on a project, answering um, uh, a discussion, participating in a discussion group uh, with um, students uh, and the teacher. And if I could just add, um, during a synchronous time, the teachers will be recording those sessions. So say a student has difficulty with a computer or they're not able to get online at that time, they could watch the actual session. Is remote instruction going to be synchronous or asynchronous? As we just said, a combination of both. Thank you. How will lunch be provided? At the elementary level, it is my understanding that lunch will be delivered to the classrooms. We're going to try to have families sign up in advance electronically. Um, and that uh, at the middle school and high school level that the students, some at the middle school will eat in their room, some will have to go to the cafeteria uh, depending on supervision. But at the high school, definitely the students uh, would be eating in the cafeteria uh, rather than the classroom. There is a request to have a special session on remote instruction in the future. If that's referring to um, parents, um, this is a great opportunity for me to say that we will have lots of opportunities for you and sessions that I will send you emails and links to and dates of all times of the day, uh, just for parents and um, by levels, elementary, middle, high school. Well, we'll have lots of opportunities for that. Uh, I am aware that the Department of Health suggests 12 feet apart for singing, but multiple studies show that particularly when singing, the virus can travel much farther, as far as 30 feet. Can they sing outside when possible? I do believe that's what some teachers are considering, again, weather permitting. And it may be remote and virtual, much like uh, the instrumental music lessons will be as well. And while we're on the topic, uh, you may have noticed the school calendar this year, if you've taken delivery of it already, that it is without dates of evening events. As of this time, all evening events are canceled uh, because we are not allowed to bring the large groups uh, together. So uh, a lot will be done virtually and it wouldn't surprise me if vocal music follows what instrumental music will be doing, especially with the onset of winter weather. 
Are elementary students expected to sit in front of a screen for an entire school day during their online instruction day? It does not seem like homes where both parents work were taken into consideration. We would never expect an elementary student to sit in front of a screen all day. So that is why we will be planning a combination of activities, um, either with direct, indirect student engagement or working on a project or an assignment. And we'll be using print materials. Dr. Coughlin and her team of instructional specialists, I know that's been at the forefront of their discussions about infusing more print materials, packets for the younger students, uh, just to get a break from the screen time. I know that's been important for them. Some schools are not using paper out of concern germs will spread. Does FM plan to have students work on Chromebooks exclusively or primarily while they're in school as well as online learning? Students will be working with Chromebooks and also print materials while they're in school and out of school. Next question. Thank you for this forum. If elementary school students will not be moving classrooms for specials, how can they get their wiggles out, which is a very important, uh, which is very important for this age group? Uh, I would say each each uh, student or excuse me each teacher will be handling that um, completely recognizing that uh, is going to be a very challenging situation to have students um, sit and so the movement will be important and classroom teachers will recognize that and, and address that. And certainly recess and outdoor time, I think, will play in, again, weather permitting. Are the teachers expected to teach simultaneously online students and in-person students? This seems like an impossible task. It is very difficult situation um, for the teachers to deal with students in all and teach um, students in all um, three cohorts but we're working hard to be creative to address um, students instructional needs in, in all three cohorts the elementary schedule released shows that grades three and four will be doing specials and morning meetings in the morning and core learning after lunch. Can parents choose to skip specials? Uh, no, we would expect students to participate in a full academic day and um, consider all of the areas, um, special areas and our core academic areas equally as important What measures have you taken to ensure bathrooms have proper ventilation to prevent the buildup of aerosolized virus particles? I'll leave that to Mr. McCarty or Mr. Furlong. I can take that. We've already been through um, all of our uh, HVAC systems to make sure all the ventilation has been working properly. We have Siemens working on the ventilation systems to make sure all our outside air is adjusted to the recommendations that we had received from our engineering firm. Uh, we're also checking to make sure all exhaust fan systems are working properly. Uh, we found a couple that weren't, took care of them, um, and that's something we check on a regular basis. In addition, we'll be using this uh, Victory Spring system to disinfect areas in the classrooms and restrooms and other areas of the building. Uh, basically, this is a misting that, you know, is sprayed into the air, uh, which should also help disinfect those areas. Will middle school and high school students be required to bring binders and notebooks, or should they be using laptops and Chromebooks? The... Um, 
supply schedules will be going out from the schools and it, it would be a combination of both. Um, we would, students won't just be using their Chromebooks, they will have other materials as well. We found this past year that Schoology had many issues on iPads. Will the K through two curriculum work around these problems? Yes, we purchased a product called Seesaw, uh, which will provide independence for kindergarten or first and second grader to submit um, any kind of assignments. Um, so school jubilee will be used for parent communication and information um, about the assignments, but the students will have the app, the Seesaw app on that iPad. It will be already logged in. The, the iPad will be set up also with Google Drive, and we hope to have it much more um, easier for the little ones. Will students at any age be able to have snacks in the classroom? It is my understanding that again, uh, teachers will help to coordinate that uh, whether it's during a mass break or having a snack outside. I know that uh, is a concern. Uh, we may not be having as many snacks as before, but certainly it's at the discretion of the teacher. Certainly we're not planning on having visitors or different parties. Uh, we're trying to quell some of that, again, to have less of the outside getting brought into the inside. What will the special ed room look like and what safety measures are taken to ensure safety for all? I heard there is plexiglass around the desks. Of course, the, the teachers and the students will be wearing masks and we have purchased, the district has purchased other PPE um, for teaching assistance. Uh, the district did purchase some polycarbonate uh, study carols, which we are going to test out. Um, they're not for, um, we don't have them for every single uh, space, but we, um, they're collapsible and portable and they adhere to the desk with a Velcro and they can be moved from a student desk to a rectangular or circular desk. So we are trying those, but um, we have uh, um, purchased a great deal of PPE so that it's available for special education staff and teaching assistants that work with our high needs students. Can you describe what a hybrid sixth grade day will look like? It is unclear if they will follow a model similar to elementary grades or older grades. in terms of me moving between classrooms? There will, the um, fifth and sixth graders, uh, they will be following a, a full schedule. And those schedules will be coming out. Uh, it will not reflect what, exactly what the elementary schedule looks like, it, but it is not a full bell schedule. We are also in those grades, we will be reducing the movement with students. But it, it won't be exactly like the elementary that was published and those schedules will be um, up on the website by Friday for Midland High School. What will facts and earth science classes look like? Aren't there, were, aren't there a required number of lab hours? For all the sciences, there's a required number of labs in order to sit for the Regents exam. Uh, we will be conducting uh, laboratories and different activities, albeit uh, any items that are in a high touch environment that could be uh, personalized for a particular student in a Ziploc bag, uh, or it needs to be disinfected again while the students are not in the room between usage. So uh, things may be spread out over a longer period of time. We'll be following state ed guidelines about that. And it could be that some of the labs are demonstration only to begin with. 
or if a student could participate in a lab at home, if that could be replicated at home at, at the lower levels, probably not at the higher levels. If remote learners will be live streaming into hybrid classes, will the remote learners be able to ask questions? The teachers will set that up and um, set up guidelines for classrooms about that. How much interaction with peers will be allowed between students? I'm assuming the question means during the school day. Again, we're going to insist upon masks and social distancing. So. We do not want the congregation of students. That's why the building principals are looking at pedestrian traffic flow in the building. And we've ordered the floor decals. As I said, some may make staircases one way, for example. So we want to limit uh, the number of interactions on congregating of the students. Can siblings in the same grade sit closer together at lunch or in class? Uh, they can sit together in the same seat on the bus, but I think for the purposes of classes that uh, social distancing and the masks will be upheld. Will FM teachers or BOCES teachers teach the all remote learning option? Uh, FM teachers, uh, that again, from the surveys, FM students with FM teachers. We were looking into a BOCES option, again, to try to pool our resources not knowing how many retirements we would have or medical leaves or child uh, rearing leaves of absence. So we were just looking to participate with BOCES in an effort to pool our resources with the other component districts, especially in those certification areas where there would be high demand and low supply in terms of the available instructors. But we're trying to keep FM students with FM teachers. Is district bandwidth adequate for anticipated use? Has it been stress tested? What yes. are options for students who don't have a reliable internet connection at home? Sorry about that, Laurel. No problem. Um, while on campus, we have done various tests, of course, with the caveat that you never know. I mentioned this morning that a, a couple of years ago when New York State started online testing, they were hit with cyber attacks. But right now, all the stress testing that we've done shows that we have ample bandwidth. If a child at home is experienced problems with the bandwidth, then definitely call that internet provider. Um, and then also uh, let the teacher know and we can work with that teacher to um, solve that problem. Can students with musical instruments leave them in their music lockers or must they carry them throughout the day? Think tuba players. I, I don't believe we've sorted out the tubas yet. Um, I do know that the music department has been working all summer to, to problem solve some of these issues. Will students who have a fever need a negative COVID test result to come back to school or is a doctor's note enough? Uh, actually, that's a great question. Dr. Montgomery, our, our new uh, COVID uh, medical supervisor is actually trying to contact Dr. Gupta, Gupta to get clarification on that. Um, the way it was originally written was that uh, a fever alone, uh, a, a note from their doctor, from the family doctor, would allow them to return as soon as the fever was cleared. Um, and she's just making sure uh, with Dr. Gupta that that meets the requirement. If a child attends daycare on the online learning days where online learning is not possible, Will the children get attendance credit for completing assignments on Saturday and Sunday? Definitely. And as we mentioned earlier, um, lessons, some of the lessons will be recorded and uh, posted on Schoology and the website. And, and we will be able to determine when students are, are online and we certainly will be giving student credit for when they're doing their work. 
I understand bandwidth was mentioned. If the district has to move online, will teachers be required to be in their rooms on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday? At this point, it's, it's undetermined. It depends, you know, if we close, uh, we are allowing the teachers to work from home on Wednesday uh, because it is not just our district, if you notice, uh, has selected that day uh, as an online learning day, but a lot of other districts as well. So again, to help with the bandwidth, uh, we're allowing them to work from home on Wednesdays. Uh, the other days of the week have not been determined yet. Will students be permitted to bring lunch from home? I believe so. I think uh, we will be mindful of any nut allergies or any other allergies uh, for that back in the classrooms, especially where we're bringing the food. So it will still be incumbent upon the district to make sure those areas are have been cleaned. How will middle school students be instructed after their arrival in the building? Will they be directed to classrooms or in the cafeteria auditorium? Uh, directly to the classrooms at all levels. There will be no congregating ahead of time. We are going to be punctual. Parents cannot drop off students way ahead of schedule. Uh, we're going to, we're working with the staggered arrivals and the temperature takers at the doors. Things are going to be a little more stringent this year. How is FM planning to address substitute teachers access to teach all three cohorts? Uh, substitute teachers may or may not be involved in teaching all three cohorts. That depends on a lot of issues involving technology. So. Uh, that that's still a work in progress. Uh, but uh, whether a substitute teacher who comes into the classroom will have the ability to access Schoology of a teacher, for instance, in the Schoology page, some of those issues still need to be worked out. But certainly there will be uh, learning for those students, regardless of whether there is a substitute in the room or not. And our last question for the evening, is there any concern about students being able to hear teachers who are six feet away and wearing masks? Is amplification possible for students both in the room and those streaming from home? We have done testing. I was actually working with some math teachers today, again at the high school. Uh, we are gonna make sure, um, but from all the tests that we've seen, um, they should be able to hear the teacher fine from where we have the, the speaker or the microphone located in the classroom. All right. Well, thank you all uh, for watching tonight. I feel like a television host. Uh, there is one more session tomorrow at one o'clock uh, for those that are interested in joining us or if you're aware of a family that was not able to join us for one of the two sessions today. We will reprise uh, this session tomorrow at one in the afternoon. Uh, a lot of work has gone into this and there's so much uncertainty. And as I said earlier, it's balanced on the head of a pin. But the one thing I know is working together as an FM community, we've appreciated your support, even the tough questions. I do know that the administrators and teachers have been tireless in working uh, through this. Again, a lot of us are scared. We don't know what the future will bring, but at the same time, we know that nothing replaces having a teacher in front of students. Uh, that is the optimum. Uh, we had one parent express that during one of our advisory committees. We would like to get back to yesteryear. And uh, I would like to echo that statement. I, I hope we can. I hope this isn't the new normal. But I do know that everybody collaborating and working together is very important. Uh, I appreciate uh, people are sending the comments in. If uh, we didn't answer your question, please reach out to us. Some of you have done that already. I wasn't kidding in terms of the number of Let's Talks that I've received. I will get to it all. I will not delegate it. It's just, as you can imagine, I've been a little busy here, uh, but I do treasure your comments. I do take it into consideration. I do share it with our administrative team. We've been meeting regularly, uh, even today, uh, through the entire pandemic since the middle of March. Uh, so we've been keeping a pulse on uh, what's been happening in our buildings, what's been happening in other school districts. And I certainly couldn't ask for a stronger team and able to pull this together. So I appreciate the public's vigilance. 
I appreciate your participation tonight. Hopefully we've answered a lot of your questions, uh, but again, if there's some lingering ones or some questions persisting, please do not hesitate to pick up the phone or use Let's Talk, whatever's easier for you. Uh, we want to be able to give you the best uh, information available. And please know we cannot guarantee anything. We're building our reopening plan on the guidance that was given to us in mid-July. And we know things have changed already since mid-July. Uh, and that being said, I think you will have to use your judgment about whether to avail yourself of the hybrid uh, model for your child or to pick the remote learning. That's gonna be a very personal decision. We would love to encourage the hybrid uh, because we wanna see the students, but we do not wanna put any undue pressure on families, especially like I said, with pre-existing health conditions or uh, elderly relatives at home, uh, we wanna be able to work with you. So thank you uh, once again for your support and taking the time to be with us tonight and uh, we will be signing off. So thank you very much and we will uh, look forward to continuing the dialogue in the future. Thank you all.